Okay, hi everyone, this is game two of the World Finals. Four player chess, and I'm gonna go ahead and um, put Isistan um, as the player whose perspective we are looking at, as he did win this game. So let's see from his perspective how he did it. Now, uh, I just finished going over game one, and uh, this should be a different final position, yeah. Uh, let's finish going over game one, and uh, it seems that we everyone rolled the same colors. So, uh, poor Cax had green in game one. He has green now, um, and everyone else as well has the same colors. I'm not sure how they decided colors would work. I'm not sure if you can pick colors ahead of time. Um, I'm not sure if there's a setting for that, so it might just be a random every game, which would be sort of strange because um, red has a little bit of an advantage to start off, um, but it's not that big in floor player chess. In fact, it might work to your advantage if you're green and you're a little bit behind um, to where people aren't as afraid of you, sort of how green won last game. Okay, red starting off with the same opening. Um, blue blocking off this diagonal, okay, but remember uh, there was a tactic on Blue's King last game, so let's see if he adapts his play here. And if I remember correctly, last time Green went for this one, but now Red and Yellow are working together early and there is not as much of an option for this, because if this happens, Red or uh, Yellow will just push again, I think. Uh, well. Could, could be okay for green anyway. Um, but there's no real reason to trade this yet. Um, green might want to wait until a more critical position to play this move. Okay. And, okay. So yellow already opening with a very defensive setup. Like it. It's a setup I've gone for many times as well. Okay, but keep in mind now this, it's gonna be a little bit hard to castle kingside, it's gonna be a little hard to castle queenside as well now that you've moved this pawn. So let's see how, let's see how yellow deals with this king safety. Okay, and now, yeah, now this position is a little bit more critical because there's the potential to double take um, whereas last time if green took here, then yellow could just move up one and then eventually take back. So this is slightly more of a critical position, but also might just be, he just felt like, he just felt like making this move first to get the diagonal. Um, okay. So, um, red won't be able to take this diagonal. Red will have to move his queen out this way. And blue then slows that down, okay. And yellow's offering, sort of a peace offering here. There's not much that can, I mean, green could go here, but then, uh, well, blue's not gonna sacrifice a queen to get that knight. So there's nothing going on yet. So yellow's going to say, what's your plan here? And if this happens, there might be a bishop trade. So it might, it might just be the case that green moves forward and yellow moves away. Whoops, yellow moves away and uh, That'll be an advantageous position for yellow because in the end game he can move like this and can capture that pawn. Okay, so green uh, develops it in another way, preserving the tension here. And now yellow might just give in and move forward or, or keep preserving the tension. Let's see what blue does. Okay, since blue moves the queen, it's kind of like uh, you don't want to get into too much trouble here. So what does yellow do? Oops, not that move. He just moves here. Okay. So yellow's still not scared about this pawn push yet. And it's true that the the queen was attacking yellow before and, and there's still no other pieces coming in. So it's probably still fine. Um, now, okay. Right, so now the threat was pawn push and then when the knight moves, then this would happen. But uh, Blue's making a lot of queen moves here for very little value. 
Again, this bishop development is interesting. Uh, blue moves here. K. Um, okay, now yellow is indirectly hitting this queen. And the queen is not moved, so there's a potential for a tactic here now. Let's see if yellow goes for it. Yes. And what will the follow up for red be? Maybe something like this. Okay, but blue has done a good job of moving his queen out and not giving her an easy road to get home. Just played for some quick tactics at the start, and uh, yeah, I've been punished myself in a few games like this recently where... Although, there is... It was a little bit risky because green could always have done this, right? Although, no. Still, if blue came here, it would be bad for blue. Um, okay, yeah, and the knight came in, that's sort of what I thought would happen. There weren't really many other tactics, so now he saves the queen, but now that rook's going to hang. And again, blue's just getting wrecked in these openings. Um, now kudos to Forkax, because he, uh, his opposite got ruined in, in the first game, and he still came out on top. But... Um, I mean, even after this knight takes, after this knight takes, there's another attack on this pawn. So this this is actually worse for blue than the first game, I think. Um, attacking the queen again. Also getting out of the way of any bishop attacks in this direction. Now it might be a good time for green to take this pawn. Um, wait, also green could take this knight right now. I wonder if he would. That seems like it would be an awfully good way to neutralize the threats here coming from the other side. Yes, he did. Okay, so this act this attack was actually wasted. Um, and it only hurt red, really. Uh, yellow didn't get hurt by it, but, um, but I think red may have miscalculated that. And so when red moved the knight here, this queen was already waiting. Okay, and... And now blue moves the queen away again. Okay, but it just, it's just likely to get attacked again. He's not really moving it to good squares. Um, not that there are many good squares. But, um, I mean, wouldn't it be better to try, like, uh, moving here and then here? Set up, at, at least set something up. This move still doesn't set anything up, right? This knight comes back. Um, how should we interpret that move? I'm not sure about this move. I mean, there were things like attack here, attack here, and he would probably lose something. But now there's still like attack here and attack the bishop. So I don't know if that got rid of the threats. And it also added a threat for later for blue. Okay, yeah, now the bishop's attacked. But shouldn't green have attacked this and then, and then blue could attack this bishop? If green's attacking the bishop, then blue has nothing to attack. If blue also attacks the bishop, then the bishop will just move. Okay, so red red always had that trade to keep yellow safe, but now red is at a significant disadvantage. He's already lost two pieces attacking blue, only gained a bishop for his troubles, and so red is looking to have the weakest position going uh, going into the later stages of the opening here. Sorry, what is this? Okay, so blue... I guess blue thinks it's too painful to take that bishop. If he takes that bishop... Um, there might be some checks. 
and some checks from or not maybe not that square but the, but this square bishop's covering that square um, so blue goes on the offensive here fine um, all right that's actually hilarious that this knight would come in with check and they would also have protection from that bishop So, yellow just keeping the bishop safe, and uh, red and blue are in poor positions again. Well, not again. Actually, red had a nice position last game. And blue's in a poor position again. And this queen move is doing what? Eventually setting up some tactics. sure about that queen move. We'll see if it uh, comes to light in a moment here. Um, and the bishop came back. So, oh, okay, now I see. Right, so now this this tactic was, uh, this was actually a tactic by Lou, because now this pawn cannot recapture the queen. Okay, so the bishop comes back, now he's threatening to recapture the queen again, so blue must move away, probably here. Um, no, not there, maybe here or here. This would also be possible. It should be one of those three. Okay. This one I don't like as much because again, you're just moving on to uh, moving to get attacked later. Okay, you will make red protect for one. Actually, you don't even red doesn't necessarily need to protect for one move. You just wait till you attack and then attack back. Um. And now there's also some negative consequences if yellow attacks this direction. So I think blue's queen moves are a little questionable. Let's see. Okay. Oh, still yellow. Yellow says there's nothing blue can do to me. I'm not worried about this capture at all. It's amazing. And it really it looks like there is nothing blue can do. Yeah, there was nothing blue could do to punish that from yellow, so um so ultimately, he's getting a more comfortable development than he should, but still, these pieces are not easily developed, and this knight retreating has made it harder for the bishop to come out. So I don't, still don't know about this knight move. Um, and yeah, blue, blue couldn't attack, so he had to protect this diagonal. Okay, green preemptively protects this pawn. Fine. Um, this move by red. I mean, I understand he's running out of pieces, but. Uh, might want to move the pawn first and then consolidate. Okay. Um, right, I don't know about this by yellow. This pawn is weak now. Um, not sure if they have a good way of attacking it. Probably do though. Um, so how can yellow? How can yellow untangle now? What? Why wouldn't he just move the knight? Like move the knight back, pawn up, bishop over. I don't know how he's going to move his pieces out. Yeah, now see, the knight comes back. I don't know if there was any... I mean, there might have been some concrete tactics for why he moved the knight back initially, but um, I didn't see them. And I also think that if there were concrete tactics before, there could easily just... there could just as easily be some now. Okay, so this battery was to go for the pawn promotion. Didn't want to waste time with this. Um, while everyone's still getting developed, he's going to try and push. Probably not a bad idea. Okay, but blue is coming to throw a wrench in the works. Okay, pawn up. Yeah, you have to get developed as yellow here. Just blocking. Okay, should, we should see. Okay, nice move by red to not um, not trade anything, but simply uh, set up a nice pawn structure for later. Blocking. And this pawn is also covered. So nice move by red. And this comes in, but but uh, that doesn't necessarily do anything yet. Um, this might this pawn might be weak in the future though. 
And again, if you well, if you move up, you're going to get forked. So it's a little bit tough to handle. I could try something like this now. Mm, maybe not. Maybe these bones both hang if you try that. Yeah, not easy for red to handle this. I sort of like keeping the rook here a little bit more. And after blue takes, you could um, you could make a threat. And maybe that would coordinate with something yellow is doing. The yellow is just really underdeveloped. Okay. And a nice pawn move here. Um, even though this is the pawn that is next to the king and this diagonal has opened, it's pretty hard in this game to take advantage of that diagonal as compared to regular chess. So this is so this is um, usually a pretty safe pawn push. And okay, wow, interesting. Yeah, it's forking the queens, but they can both move away, so not really a fork. Um, you might just end up losing this pawn. No, um, what's going on? Uh, take and then check. Um, this is, still doesn't make much sense. What other threat could green have? I mean, he could take this and take this. Let's see what green ends up doing. Okay, and now his bishop's under attack as well, so we see he's going to do what? Okay, protect. And now this trade will happen, but now yellow, yeah. This is how yellow's gonna get ahead. He's gonna get rid of this dark squared bishop. Um, isn't it red's turn? Remove here. Is there a timeout? I mean, time didn't go down to zero. Uh, people guessing who the people are. That's nice. Because um, it was played on anonymous settings. Um, Green checkmate, blue resigned. No, this should have happened before that. What am I missing? So this is green's turn. I mean, red, yeah, he's in check. He can get out of checkmate though, right? Red resigned, okay. All right, so let's see what the threat was. If red takes here um, from blue, We will see a capture here, maybe. And green's not in an easy position. Um, when this happens, and this happens, and this happens, and this happens, uh, this is gonna happen. So, I mean, red's in a bad position, yeah, but um, I don't know why you'd resign here, necessarily. Um, maybe it's uh, maybe he thought he knew who certain players were and thought if he resigned it would eliminate their chance of winning another player's chance of winning because keep in mind uh, if you can stop another player from winning when they already have a point it's like uh, pretty good right so if he thought um if he thought, for example, that um, blue or green was uh, a certain player, and he thought yellow would win, then he could try, uh, in this case it would be Forkax, right, because Forkax already has one point in the tournament. You could strategically resign and, and try to change the position that way. Um, but I don't fully understand the resign there. Um, to the comments. All right, let's see. Okay, and nice taking that bishop and huh. So green responded by taking that pawn. Yeah, now everything's hanging for green. So since green is four cacks, that may have been a strategic resign. Okay, 
and that's nice because it was a check. So this threat on the queen is non-existent when when queen's checked. So he takes the extra bishop, and now getting that knight out is that useful? I guess. I guess it would open that up, that attack. Who goes for the check? Okay. Um, so let's see. Pawns, yeah, blue and green should have an easier time promoting. That's for sure. Um, so it'll have to come down to a longer game in order for yellow to win this. Okay, so green takes that. that has to be a mistake. Wait. Oh, okay. Alright. So this is like a this is like a peace offering by Green. He's saying, well blue has a lead. And you're not gonna win without killing blue. Especially if blue promotes. So I'm going to help you stop blue's promotion since you can't get over there. And um Okay, so that's the current plan. But yellow's also trying to promote, right? And now blue's stuck, you know, stopping two people from promoting. Uh, sorry, green is, and you can't really stop two people from promoting by yourself, so. Okay, take there. And blue did not take the rook. Interesting. Um. A lot of times, uh, when you have a situation like this, let's see how, how strong would that pawn be if it were there? I guess Blue's thinking that this rook will be an advantage to him rather than a disadvantage. And wow, green just promoted, so what? So then uh, blue and yellow must work together here. So blue takes that pawn. Some trade the rook. Yellow is just sort of shuffling right now. Yellow moves here. Blue does not take that because they have to deal with the queen together. And And since blue is ahead of yellow in points, and he has to deal with green's queen. He's going to allow this. And because there was a check coming. So that's amazing for uh, yellow. And he's going to move away, let blue have the... Ooh. Green traded that, and now yellow is the sole queen boy. We're trying to keep their king safe. Okay, so this is a work trade. And blue getting the queen as well. And yellow has two. So now they really need to attack yellow, I would say. Seems like what's going on. These are uh, 1v1. Nice. Yeah, that's basically blue's last healthy pawn. Lost that rook, and now actually yellow can just uh, one v two. Should be able to. All right, and then blue just resigned. Yeah. 
<clears throat> so going into the end game, the one versus one versus one end game, which is quite long and arduous. Yellow had the worst position, but he had some pawns that were promising. We go all the way back. Basically, as soon as queens are traded here. And all greens bishops got eliminated, importantly. Bishops are pretty pretty strong in the end game. Yellow had some nice pawns, though you would think blue and green would be able to promote more easily. Um, but it turns out that blue's point lead led to some early cooperation between green and yellow. And eventually, yellow was deemed weak enough that uh, that once blue started to queen here, uh, sorry, once green started to queen here, um, yellow was allowed to queen several times in order to help defend against that menace. And that's how it ended up. So these 1v1v1v1v1v1 v1 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 situations are tough to play and tough to call because uh, the teams and the uh, the one who is attacked is always changing. And one thing it often comes down to is who has more pawns and who can make a safer king or the safest king. So here I would say, if we go back to this position here, um, green's king is the least safe, while yellow's king is very safe and blue's king is pretty safe as well. Pretty safe, yeah. So, um, so it would be tough for green to win in a situation with no queen and and bottom king safety. So whenever two people try to um, try to team on you, it'll be pretty tough to defend your king. You see, he's getting he's getting chipped away here. He's getting nibbled at. And he has to keep that knight back the, for the rest of the time just to protect against the checks. So you're basically down a knight because you didn't find a good place for your king. And that's uh, that's the real cost of king safety right there. Um, Blue's also using a knight to protect the king. Yellow's knight's a little bit more active than theirs. Yellow just has a better king position. Okay. Right. Okay. So, uh, king, so what led to yellow winning this game? Probably king safety and um, and the favorable pawn pushes and favorable alliances at favorable times were nice. Okay, so that leads to a situation where four cags has one point and Icy Stun also has one point after two games. So we'll see what happens in the future games coming up.